Right, everyone, hello, how are we doing? It's a brand new week and there's not a great deal happening. I certainly feel like we've hit a bit of a lull now um, in this long summer that we've got ahead of us. The league finished, what, a couple of weeks ago now. I think we had plenty of looking back. We had that four-part season review that went out on the channel last week. If you haven't come across that for whatever reason, um, I would certainly urge you to have a wee look at that in all it's three and a half hours, I think more than three and a half hours worth of content. Looking back at last season through the videos, at the time you get to hear me butchering Abada's name. I think you get to hear me butchering Postacoglu's name. You get to see Stevie's faces that just told the story of the season. Um, and obviously loads of wee funny bits and bobs as well as the great memories from last campaign. So I'd certainly urge you to have a wee look at that if you get a chance, if you're looking to fill your evening, for example, you could watch all four back to back and it would take up about three and a half hours. But yeah, we've reached this point in the summer and there's still a long way to go in this summer um, when there's not a great deal happening. Today we're going to do a little bit of a roundup. We've got an update on quite a few things that have happened over the course of the weekend. Some things I want to get off my chest as well. And then we will crack on and try and get through this uh, long, long summer without Celtic. But as much as Ange Postacoglu's first team haven't been around for the past couple of weeks or so, Celtic were still winning trophies over the weekend. That's not strictly true. A trophy is what we won. The Celtic women's team won the Scottish Cup for the first time in their history to complete their first ever double in addition to the SWPL Cup they won earlier in the season. They won both finals against Glasgow City, who are kind of the powerhouses of, of Scottish football, or they have been for the last couple of decades I think. Recently Celtic and Rangers have challenged that supremacy that Glasgow City held for so long and I think Hibs have been in and around there as well but Celtic are making a lot of progress under Fran Alonso and yesterday beat Glasgow City to win the Scottish Cup. It was 2-2 at half time with Celtic twice taking the lead through Shen Mengu. Brilliant finish after the most amazing ball from Jacinta Galabadarachichi. Um, honestly, that pass was brilliant. I mean, I don't think anyone else in the stadium even saw that the pass was on. And just with, I think, her right foot, she just kind of clipped it over into the channel and uh, Shen Mengu tucked it away off the, I think it was either the post or the crossbar. Great goal. Charlie Wellens also scored a penalty for Celtic. A kind of bizarre advantage given by the referee um, that went on for ages and then he, he gave Celtic the penalty and Wellens tucked it away. But Glasgow City had levelled the match on both occasions after both of those goals and the game went to extra time. Now it's worth saying Celtic were down to 10 players for most of the game. They had Jody Bartle sent off to do with that Glasgow City second goal from the penalty spot. But they fought like, well, Lions and won the game in extra time. It was Izzy Atkinson who won the cup for Celtic. A really good counter-attack, great through ball and just a, a real driven finish into the net with a left foot. Now, it reminded me of a, a goal the Celtic men's team have scored into the same net at Tynecastle, And I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like left-footed edge of the box, I think through the keeper's legs. Brilliant finish from Atkinson. And Celtic held on in the latter stages to win the cup. Now, I watched the highlights of this game via a vlogger on this very platform that I'm talking on right now, which is YouTube. And the thing that struck me from watching the the action from the game and the atmosphere and all of that was how much it, it mattered to the players and the emotion when they scored every single goal was incredible. They're clearly a very driven team. They're clearly very well motivated by the manager and by the captain, Kelly Clark. And hopefully this kind of success gives the Celtic women's team a, a springboard to move forward in, in future years. The league was a disappointment this season after how well it had gone last campaign with a real title, title race. But it's obviously still been a really positive campaign to have netted the two domestic cup trophies. And with women's football clearly on the rise in Europe, when you think of the, the Camp Nou in Barcelona being packed full, I think, two or three times in recent months for crucial Champions League games, 
I do think there's a real opportunity for Celtic to, to get on board with this because women's football is going to explode, I think, over the next five, ten years. It arguably already has. And I think Scotland's just been left behind a little bit. We're not really getting those major crowds that maybe they are in other parts of the world. Um, I do think there'll be a breakthrough match. Hopefully Celtic can be involved in that. Having said that, by the way, a, a final bit of good news on this is that the attendance record for a Women's Cup final in Scotland was broken yesterday. Now, it seems like a little bit of a niche record, that. But the fact that 4,345 people were in attendance at Tynecastle yesterday, not even in the same city as, as either Celtic or Glasgow City come from, I think that's pretty pretty decent. Um, and I think if the game had been played in Glasgow, maybe at Fur Hill, for example, we would have seen an even bigger crowd. Now, they did actually play their last final at Fur Hill back in December. I think they got about 3,500 that day. So immediately you've got, um, you know, a larger crowd turning up a few months later, obviously better weather, and also, you know, greater interest in the, in the Scottish Cup and greater interest in this Celtic team, I'm sure would have ha played a part in there as well. So, real good news there for the women's team, going from strength to strength. It'd be great to see them winning the league next year, getting into the Champions League again, all of that kind of stuff. And as I say, hopefully we're going to get that big breakthrough moment at Celtic Park um, in the coming years when we get a big crowd at Celtic Park and women's football grows in, in Scotland as much as it had in the rest of Europe. So, well done, Geheros. Now, I've had a little bit of a rough weekend. I'll be totally honest with you in saying that. Basically, when the league season is going on, all my weekends are kind of taken care of. And a bit like our humble footballers who sacrifice everything for winning. I do the same for this channel. Um, Sunday night... I was up in Glasgow again, and while it was the pet shop boys that were on at the Hydro, I was away seeing the We Never Stop boys at the Armadillo. That's probably getting taken out, that bit. But yeah, our very own Jackie McNamara was there, alongside Chris Sutton, Paul Lambert, and Lubo Moravchik. Martin O'Neill was the headline guest. Spanish football expert Graham Hunter was the host. And it was a really fun night. I'm sure a few of you watching this would have been there. Some brilliant stories. Lubo not really having much of a clue about what was being said. We even got a bit of a sing song too. And um, the armadillo was pretty full. So yeah, a fun night had by all. What a team that was. And, and they were led by a brilliant manager as well. It was interesting actually listening to Martin O'Neill because... Martin O'Neill recently turned 70. I mean, I, th I always think it's quite deceiving when you look at him. You don't think that's a 70-year-old there. But he's still just razor sharp, you know, with his put-downs. And you can only imagine how how what he would have been like in the dressing room. I think Jackie's spoken about it previously. And when I look at him and I listen to him, I do see similarities with, with Ange. I know there's real differences there as well. But when you... In terms of, you know, leaders and, and being, you know, razor sharp, as I say, um, so switched on, really funny as well, I think, both of them, real, you know, one-liners, and I, I could imagine Ange doing something like this in 20 years' time, sitting next to, you know, um, Joe Hart and Anthony Ralston and, and players like that, and, and hopefully that happens one day, I, I really think that's what we're dealing with here. An amazing, amazing team and it's brilliant looking back at these teams and enjoying it when this current team's doing well as well. I feel that adds to the whole thing. I've been at a couple of these nights recently, but the one last night was great. Um, so I hope everyone had a good night if you were at that. Um, in terms of actual Celtic news, in terms of the first team, there's not a great deal of it. I was chatting to a few of the guys on the channel earlier today and... Um, and we all kind of felt that it feels a bit more like an international break this than the summer transfer window. I think a lot of the focus at the moment is in Scotland. We face Ukraine on Wednesday night at Hamden. Cal McGregor very likely to be involved. So too could that be Anthony Ralston, David Turnbull, Greg Taylor. Scotland actually have four games in 14 days at the start of next month, and that's could go up to five if they see off Ukraine at Hamden. So there's a lot of football. Other countries are going to be in action in this period as well. So just a bit like Celtic, football never really stops. But aye, in terms of Celtic news, let's just go through 
I think there's a couple of stories here. Um, we'll do it relatively quickly as well and let you on with your day. Uh, Liela Bada would like to face Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League next season for the simple reason that he wants to go up against Lionel Messi. Um, I want to see PSG v Celtic too, but for another reason, Ralston, Neymar, part two, need I say any more. Just on the Champions League, we do have now have a clearer idea of what teams will be in the group stage. We actually know 26 of the 32 teams already. The final six will obviously be sorted in qualifying. And we actually know all but one of the teams we could face. That supports there on screen. Now, pot two, probably slightly stronger than pot one, given that the first pot is kept for the big trophy winners from this season, Champions League winner, Europa League winner, and um, all of the other kind of major domestic winners from the, the top leagues in Europe. Even pot three is like a Europa League pot one equivalent. But there are teams in there that Celtic can compete with, and I'm sure we will. Marseille at the bottom there are the only team still waiting to find out what pot they're going to be in. And it does actually sink in a little bit when you look at these pots because we've not been in the competition for a few years now. So it's not as if you'd get anyone and be a bit kind of sick fed up of that. Remember how we got Barca every year and playing like one of the biggest clubs in the world suddenly got quite boring. I think if we pulled out Barca next year, people would have that excitement back. Don't get me wrong, there's probably teams I'd rather face in there. I mean, even like just picking a couple out, like a team like Atletico Madrid, I know there's history there and all that stuff, but seeing Celtic go up against Diego Simeone's team would, would be amazing, I think. Inter Milan as well, wouldn't that be so special to see us play them again. I know we played them in the Europa League a few years ago, but Champions League would be a bit different. So many teams in there, the English sides, I'd love like Liverpool, Van Dijk and Robertson coming back up the road um, to Celtic Park. It would be amazing. Brilliant just seeing Ange's team going up against these sides. And we've not really got that long to wait. We'll have the full list of teams after qualifying at the end of August. The draw is on Thursday the 25th. So, yeah, not long to wait at all. I guess for now, I will say goodbye. We do have a few uh, topics that we can chat about on the channel this week. So the videos um, should be quite interesting. For today, I just wanted to have a little bit of a chat, really, after not having much of a chance last week. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow when I'll chat a little bit more.